This is Center Stage, putting your firm in the spotlight by highlighting business owners and other industry experts to help take your firm to the next level. Hey everyone, and welcome to Center Stage. I am your host, John Henson. And this week, uh, back with some more practical tips uh, designed to just help make your life a little bit easier. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at ways that uh, we can improve our memory. And, and to stay sharp. I know, you know, as a firm owner, business owner, there's just a million things going on every single day, a ton to just keep track of. Uh, and I think, you know, especially as we live in, a, in an increasingly digital age with, with smartphones and apps and everything designed to uh, remind us of everything, it can be uh, easy to stop relying on our own memory. And that, that kind of muscle, for lack of a better term, uh, can be a little weak. So today, to kind of help us out and, and get that, uh, you know, worked out, I am joined by uh, world-renowned memory expert, uh, Chester Santos. Uh, Chester, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so like, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't really sell it very well. I said you're a world-renowned memory expert, but I mean, you have an extensive resume. You have just a, a, an impressive line of credentials. I mean, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you, and, and just kind of how you got to this point and, and, you know, use your exceptional memory abilities to help everybody. Well, you know, I won the United States National Memory Championship. And in order to do that, I had to master uh, many different types of memory techniques in order to do things like memorize uh, the names of hundreds of people, uh, sheets of computer generated random digits perfectly in just a matter of minutes. And since winning the competition, I've gone on to give presentations in more than 30 different countries for various types of organizations on how really anyone can develop these skills and leverage these memory skills towards more success in one's career, personal life. Also, if you happen to have any kids or grandkids in school, uh, what we talk about today would be very useful there as well. Awesome. So yeah, so like, how did you discover that that you had such a powerful memory? Or was it just something that like, was it just like a skill that you were kind of interested in, and, and you just kind of honed it over the years? Like, you know, how did you get to this point? So I probably started out a little above average in terms of memory, in that I was often getting the comment from people, wow, you have a really good memory. And with those comments kind of in the back of my mind, when I happened to just randomly catch one night flipping channels, I caught a segment on ABC's 2020, that evening news program, they had a segment on the United States National Memory Championship, it sparked my interest because supposedly I had a good memory. But when I looked into what the best people in the country were scoring in the various events, memorizing decks of playing cards perfectly in minutes, again, hundreds of names, hundreds of digits, and, and so on, I, I realized, although I was probably above average, I wasn't on that level. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started doing a lot of research. All right, how can one magnify their memory ability from where it's currently at? Uh, based on my research, I experimented with a lot of different techniques. I found what seemed to be working best for me personally. Uh, I stuck to training in the subset of techniques I felt were the best. Uh, eventually, I did win the U.S. Memory Championship. And again, since then, I've been training people in the techniques that I feel are not only the most effective, but also that one would be able to put to practical use right away as well. Yeah. And so, you know, I kind of mentioned it, you know, at the start of the show, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I've got my computer in front of me, I got my phone over here. I mean, there's so many things, you know, with like calendar apps and reminder apps, you know, I, even I've noticed, um, there's just there's so many things that can, you know, like help remind us of things. I mean, one of the big things, you know, at least for me personally, um, I, one of the things that people talk about with me is like, I, I know how to get to places like they I'm, I've been referred to as like a human GPS, which with GPS and Google Maps, not exactly like the most, you know, in demand skill these days, but like, I don't necessarily need a GPS to take me anywhere. I can look at a map real quick. Oh, okay, this is where I need to go. All right, I'm good. I'm off. But what have you seen kind of, you know, especially with all of the, the people that you coach and all of that, you know, ha have you noticed kind of a almost like a decline in, in people's memory skills with all of this technology? 
Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that there's a, a huge decline going on right now in terms of human memory ability. The use it or lose it principle really does apply to your memory. One quick example, phone numbers. So we all used mm -hmm. to be able to remember the phone numbers of so many friends, family members. I remember growing up, my parents would give me emergency numbers that they thought were important for me to know in case of an emergency, right? We all used to be able yeah. to do that. But really nowadays you give somebody even one phone number and they feel handicapped in their ability to remember even one number. It's getting so bad that you have a lot of people out there today that don't even know their own phone number. So I think it's a really good example of the use it or lose it principle. Another example would normally be navigation you're the exception in that you're naturally good in that area but really anything that you're not exercising you'll get worse at it so there are a lot of people out there with that don't have that natural navigation ability and they may drive in a city for five plus years uh, if something's wrong with the gps or something's wrong with the network connection in that area they're just going to have to pull over restart their phone hope the issue resolves itself or they won't even be able to navigate to really well or you know commonly known landmarks uh, yeah. in a city without that the help of that gps so i mean i always acknowledge i i believe it or not i'm even a speaker sometimes at tech conferences and i acknowledge how powerful technology is how it makes our lives easier but i just let people know that we need to be a little bit wary of being 100 percent digitally dependent and using uh, the technology to do things that we could uh, use as a, a chance to exercise our brain a little bit. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, and if you covered it and, and you don't really have anything else to add and that's totally fine. But I mean, you know, I mean, where do you where do you see this kind of thing going? I mean, you know, what what does society look like in like five or 10 years as as more and more tech becomes available and, and people just aren't using their actual memory as much anymore. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about it. Um, you know, I'm not sure what the future holds for us, but memory is important for a lot of things. I, I think that people don't realize exactly how important it is. Uh, you know, it actually has an impact even on not only productivity, I think productivity is somewhat obvious, but um, creativity and innovation. So we have all of these inventions right now, all of these uh, awesome innovations that have happened, but not according to me, but according to Nobel Prize winning neuroscientist Eric Condell, what is stored in your long term memory in your knowledge bank directly affects your potential for creativity innovation. So when you're presented with some new form of information, some new information is hitting you, right? What happens in your mind, what new ideas hit you is all based upon that new piece of information interacting with what's stored in your long-term memory bank. So if you're not storing anything there anymore, really people are going to even start to lose that ability for for innovation. So there, there's a lot of danger, I believe, um, in people losing their memory ability that that many are not aware of. Yeah, and you know, kind of kind of big picture, kind of something that I just thought of. I mean, you know, I, you you're aware of the quote, you know, like those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And I and I kind of see that little bit of connection there, where it's just like people aren't aren't you know when people don't access their memory and they don't draw on those past experiences when they are innovating or trying to create or whatever. And they're, and they're not being, you know, they're not able to recall what they've learned in the past. They're not going to really be able to move forward. They're just going to keep, you know, spinning their wheels. And so it, it's really interesting. Um, before we jump into uh, an exercise or two, which I'm really excited about just around memory, um, you know, obviously this is, you know, Spotlight Branding, we are a marketing company. You know, I try to, if it's not fully business development related, try to find some sort of marketing nugget um, that we can take from this. And, you know, for us, I, you know, we think that like successful marketing starts with a good networking strategy. And obviously, if you're going to a networking event, you're going to be meeting a lot of people. What kind of tips do you have 
because I know you've done this, you know, whether, you know, in your, in some of your exercises, I mean, what kind of tips do you have for people to come away from a networking event and, and maximize the, the things they remember about the people that they meet? Yeah. So I like to quote the book, how to win friends and influence people. Uh, A lot of people have probably heard about it to this day. It's still one of the most popular business and personal success books ever written. Uh, It was written in that book that the sweetest sound to a person in any language is the sound of their own name. And also that everyone's favorite subject is themselves. So in fact, when you can remember people's names, things about them, it helps you to build better business, personal relationships. I would say to begin with, try to get better at remembering people's names. That's going to be the most important to first establish or build a new relationship, right? So let's say you are at a conference and you meet someone at one of the lunches. If you can run into them later, if you run into them later and you can say, hey, John, how's it going? You know, I enjoyed our talk over lunch. You start to better connect with that person, right? So I would start out with trying to get better at remembering names. Um, Here are some steps that anybody can put into practice that I think will help you. Step number one, whenever you're introduced to someone at a conference, meeting, whatever type of function it might be, get into the habit of immediately repeating the name. So if you're introduced to someone named John, just nice to meet you, John, or pleased to meet you, John, that's it. It might seem totally obvious, but a lot of times when we're introduced to someone, we're not paying attention to the name. Our mind's all over the place. We're thinking about the the next meeting or what we're going to eat for dinner later. Um, You know, a lot of times we don't pay too much attention, but that going through that first step, you have to pay attention for at least one second to the name in order to repeat it back to the person, right? So try to get into uh, doing that. Eventually, you're going to find it becomes a habit. Step two, early on in the interaction with the person, ask them a simple question using their name. So John, how long have you been with this organization? That's it. I want to clarify. I don't mean use the name over and over to where it might seem a little bit weird. Just Mm -hmm. using it one time early on will reinforce it and prevent it from just going in one ear and out the other ear. Step three, take a few seconds to think of a connection between the name and anything that you already know. So John, maybe think of John Lennon. It could be somebody famous like that. It could be a character though from a TV show or movie that you like that has that same name. Could be something as simple as you have a friend or family member that has that same name. Really thinking of a connection between the name and literally anything at all that you already know, it's really gonna help the name to stick so much better in your mind. Step number four, whenever you leave the conference, the meeting, try to say goodbye to people actually using their name. That's going to go a long way toward helping you to remember more of those names in the longer term. So uh, those four steps, I think if people will take the time to go through them, it's really going to improve people's ability to remember names. Yeah, I, I love that. What So I guess it is all of your training and stuff just completely, I guess, internalized for, for lack of a better term, or how much of it do you recommend, like even just like taking some simple notes and writing things down? Yeah, uh, you can go ahead and take notes. Um, if people are very comfortable doing that, I say, go ahead and continue to take notes. What you want to be wary of is that a lot of times when people know that they can take notes, Mm -hmm. It's a form of outsourcing, almost like outsourcing it to the electronic device, right? You're Mm -hmm. just writing everything down, but turning off your brain. You're not paying attention. You're not absorbing that information, right? So I encourage you that while you continue to take notes, also try to go through some of these exercises that I teach. But basically, what basically makes you do is focus more, pay a lot of attention, right? And then um, there are some other things that you can do from there, but make sure that you're not turning off your brain when you're taking these notes. Awesome. So then, yeah. So let's talk about some of these exercises. I mean, what are, what are some simple things that people can do, uh, to, to just make even, even small improvements to their memory? Yeah. So I'll quickly go over three main overarching principles that will apply no matter what memory technique you use. And then we'll try to learn a technique that and go through an exercise that you'll go through and the audience can follow along with. So quickly, the three main principles that will always apply one, 
try to turn the information that you want to remember into visuals. Mm -hmm. We're very good at remembering things that we see. So that would apply even to names. So in addition to those four steps that I gave earlier, if you meet someone named Mike, maybe visualize a microphone. If you meet someone named Alice, maybe picture a white rabbit because that reminds you of Alice in Wonderland. There's a little bit more to that visual technique, but let me just mm -hmm. cut it off there. I can get yeah. into names late, later uh, in more, even more detail if we don't run out of time. But for now, I just wanted to introduce that concept of turning the information that you want to remember into something that you can picture in your mind, right? Second principle is while you're visualizing, try to then involve more and more senses. So you don't just see the microphone, maybe you hear the microphone, you touch it. Uh, as you involve more senses, when trying to encode information into your memory, you will be activating more and more areas of your brain and building more connections in your mind to the information, making it easier to retrieve it later. Third and final principle is while you are seeing and experiencing this in your minds, try to make it all weird in some way if you can, crazy, unusual, because there's a psychological aspect to human memory we tend to remember things pretty easily that catch us by surprise that are extraordinary in some way, right? So, mm. you know, if right now in, in the room that you're in, if an elephant crashed into the room right now and started to spray water all over you with this trunk, if that actually happened right now, you'd probably remember that for the rest of your life. Even 30, right. 40 years from now, you'd be telling that story. You're, you're never going to believe this. I had a memory guy uh, on my show and during the interview, an elephant crashed into the room. It was just totally unbelievable. So there is this psychological aspect to human memory. We can harness that, right? Take advantage of it. and It makes things very easy to remember. So while you're creating these images involving more senses, try to make it also weird and unusual. So those are the three main principles that will apply no matter what memory technique you end up using. Now let's try to apply those three principles with an interactive exercise. I'm right. going to use you as the guinea pig here, and right. uh, the audience can follow along. You're going to try to commit to memory without writing it down or using an electronic device to aid you. Only your memory you're going to use here. You're going to memorize this word list. It's going to be monkey, iron, rope, kite, house, paper, shoe, worm, envelope, pencil, river, rock tree cheese and dollar now how people if anyone normally would be brave enough to attempt to memorize that what they would normally do is want to write it out over and over again they would want to then read it over and over again recite it to themselves over and over just rote memory that is not very effective especially in terms of long-term memory if you manage to do it, it would only be in the very short term tomorrow definitely a week from now most of those words would vanish from your memory instead we're going to use a different approach i'm going to guide you through a visual scenario right a little story i'm going to guide you through it and just try to relax and see what i described to you happening in your mind that's all you have to do just have fun with it and then it's it's going to be easy to remember everything so the first word i had given you was monkey so I want for you to just visualize in your mind a monkey. Just see that monkey. You can do this with your eyes opened or closed, whatever is more comfortable for you in terms of visualization. This monkey is dancing around making monkey noises. Boop, 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 boop. Whatever monkey would sound like. I'm working on the monkey impression, but just try to see and hear the monkey. The monkey now picks up a gigantic iron because that's the next word I had given you. So just see this monkey dancing around with a giant iron maybe like you would iron your clothes with. The iron starts to fall because that's too heavy for the monkey. It starts to fall, but a rope attaches itself to the iron. And maybe even imagine that you're touching the rope, involves some more senses there, right? Maybe it feels sort of rough, okay? You look up the rope and you see that the other end of the rope is attached to a kite. It's flying around in the air. Maybe you reach up and try and touch that kite the kite you notice now crashes into the side of a house really see that kite crash into the house just visualize that just see this in your mind like a movie or cartoon playing in your head the kite crashes into a house you notice now that the house is completely covered in paper for some weird reason there's paper all over that house see the paper 
out of nowhere, a shoe appears and it starts to walk all over that paper. Maybe it's messing up the paper as it's walking on it. See that shoe. The shoe smells pretty badly, so you decide to investigate and see why. You look inside of the shoe and you find a smelly worm crawling around inside there. Smelly worm. The worm jumps out of the shoe and into an envelope. Maybe it's going to mail itself or something. I don't know. But envelope was next. Out of thin air, magically, a pencil appears and it starts to write all over that envelope. Maybe it's addressing it, the pencil. Mm -hmm. Okay. The pencil now jumps into a river and there's a huge splash like you would never expect to see. When it hits the river, the river you notice is crashing up against a giant rock. Really see that? The river's crashing up against a giant rock. That rock flies out of the river. It crashes into a tree. This tree is growing cheese. You probably haven't seen a tree like that. This one is growing cheese. And out of the cheese shoots a dollar. Try your best to see a dollar coming out of the cheese. That was it. That was all of the words. Some people may already have those committed to memory, believe it or not. But we're going to run through this again in about 20, 30 seconds and just replay through this little story that you've created in your mind. So we start off with the monkey. You should see the monkey dancing around with something. What is it? It's an iron. All right. As it started to fall, something attached it to it. What was it? It was a rope. See the rope. Feel the rope. You look up the rope. The other end of the rope is attached to the see the kite all right the kite crashed into hopefully can see the house in your mind what was the house covered in see that paper something walked all over the paper hopefully you're seeing that shoe what was crawling inside of the shoe it was a worm see that worm the worm jumped out of the shoe and into an envelope all right what wrote on the envelope picture that pencil the pencil jumped into the river. The river was crashing up against the, see the rock. The rock flew into the tree. That tree was growing cheese. And what came out of the cheese? See the dollar, right? You should be able to recall now the entire list of random words pretty easily by simply playing through that story in your mind. Each major object that you encounter in the story will give you the next word. So go ahead yeah. and give it a try and your audience can follow along and see how they do. All right. I think I've got it. I think cool. I, I may miss one or two in here, but all right. So we have Take your time. the monkey. We have the monkey with the iron, with the rope attached to the kite. Kite flies into the tree. House? No. The house. There was, no, yeah. the tree's farther down. Yep. Um, all right, yeah. And to the house, the house is made of paper. Nice. Uh, there's a shoe walking over yep. the paper yep. house. There's a worm inside the shoe. <laughs> yeah. Um, the worm. Hang on. Hang on. I got this. I got this. I got this. The worm. Let's see. I know, I know the, okay, so like, I know the, there's other, I know the other words. I'm trying to remember how the story connects. Okay, cool. We made the worm story. jumps, the worm jumps into the envelope. So see it go into the envelope. Yeah. The worm jumped into the envelope. Yeah. And see then, it go into the envelope and then something was writing on the envelope. Yeah. And then the pencil was writing on the envelope and then the pencil, did the pencil, is this where the pencil flies into the river? You got it. Nice. Yeah. And so then the river is crashing to the rock and the rock is made of cheese. That the rock flies into the tree. So the see rock, there's crash. the tree. Yeah. Yeah. The rock, see yeah, the, the rock, rock flies into fly, the tree. crash into the tree. Yeah. Yes. And, and the tree is growing. The tree. the tree is growing cheese. Cheese growing cheese. And what yeah. comes out of the cheese? A dollar flies out of the, the cheese. The dollar, yes. God. Yeah, so okay. the dollar I feel flies like I butchered that. Cheese. No, I feel... what I want you to try to do now is I want you to try to go in reverse. So the dollar mm -hmm. is coming out of what? Dollar's going out of the tree. Or sorry, the, the dollar's going out of the cheese. 
which is coming which out is of the attached tree. to the tree right and what which, had crashed into the tree the rock yeah which was coming and, from the river yep, which is where the what, pencil flew you got you got it which had been writing on what which came from the envelope which is where the worm was and the worm which, came from the um the wor- uh, the shoe yep which was walking on the paper house yep which then, was where the kite had flown into it. which was attached to the rope which was attached to the iron that the monkey was holding you got it so in reverse as well yeah, yeah. so i'm great job great job uh, even there in in reverse so if anyone following along had a few blanks which is perfectly normal you're just going to play through that little story in your mind two or three mm-hmm. more times which is, which will only take one minute probably right right to just run through that in your head and it's really going to be locked in there and you're going to find because you're using a lot of the brain without realizing it it's that it's then going to stay there for a while and subsequent reviews so i get people emailing me weeks even months after a presentation wanting to demonstrate they can't believe that they still remember all of the words if you then review it right weeks or months later it's going to stay there even longer term so this is a really good way to take information from working memory which is the memory that lasts for a few seconds or less into short-term memory which is minutes hours days eventually into long-term memory now we just did random words but this that simple that's called the story method Mm -hmm. uh that that could be applied even to giving a sales or marketing presentation, minimizing the amount of notes that you would use. Each major point, talking point, and sub point would be turned into an image, and then you build a little story to remind you of those talking points. Now, just a quick example, you know, if I were going to talk about healthcare in the U.S., maybe my first image is simply of a stethoscope that the doctor uses to check your heartbeat. That's just going to represent the topic for discussion is healthcare. First talking point, maybe the high cost of healthcare in the US. So shooting out of the stethoscope, a bunch of hundred dollar bills. Next talking point in order to get certain things covered. Sometimes we need to find a way to cut through or navigate through a lot of red tape. Wrapping itself around the hundred dollar bills is all of this red tape. So that's, that should give you an idea, I think, of how you could apply this to a sales marketing presentation. Maybe it's meeting with a client or potential client wanting to demonstrate you know, all of the things you learned about their company and your research and how your marketing services are perfect for what they're doing, right? When you can do that, maintain eye contact with the person to show that you know your stuff and you've done the research, you know, you're very impressive, especially in today's business world in which the average professional is not working on their memory much. Yeah, you're going to be uh, more impressive and definitely more memorable if you can do this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and even even as we've kind of moved on, I still have you know monkey iron rope kite, you know, totally. All that, yeah. all that, it, it's, all that's still it in stays my stays there. Yeah, absolutely, and that's and that's really incredible. How can how can people learn more about you? Uh, you know, do you have any resources that that people can access to to help them out? Yeah, if people would like to go further, deeper with their memory training, the best place to go would be memoryschool.net. Uh, I would visualize maybe a giant fishing net to remember that it's .net. So memoryschool.net, um, I have an entire online memory school core training, advanced training. There's uh, ongoing training uploaded every month. Um, it's only $200 to enroll which gives you instant access to the core and advanced training videos. And then you can stay a member as long as you'd like for that ongoing uh, uh, training. I set up for your podcast center stage podcast code CS. Um, I set it to be valid for 100 uses. I have no idea how many people in your audience are going to be interested in the memory school, but Anyway, the first yeah. 100 people to use that should have the enrollment fee completely waived. So you'll see the $200 wiped out on the checkout screen if you use code CS. Awesome. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Chester, this has been this has been really great. I, I'm going to keep, you know, keep some of this stuff in mind. I mean, you know, because for me personally, like one of the one of the things that that I struggle with a lot is in you know social situations and and honestly remembering people's names i can remember a bunch of other stuff 
but the name is like one of the first things that that disappears and so a lot of these activities and exercises i can i can even use personally uh to to help improve that and so uh before we get out of here i do have one final question for you uh and that is if you had one final piece of advice for our listeners what would it be uh yeah my final piece of advice advice really would be when Ever you are interested in a certain area, maybe it's developing new skills, you want to develop memory skills, or maybe it's uh, negotiation skills or something, something else, or playing an instrument, uh, I would recommend to try and just get started right away, you know, sign up for some sort of course or, or other resource, but just get started right away. Um, and I think that if you get into the habit of doing that, you're going to be amazed at how many new skills you're able to develop over time and really just develop a little bit each week. So maybe even, even just 15 minutes a week, if you are consistent and do it every single week, by the end of the year, I think you're gonna be really amazed at what you're able to do. So just get started right away and, and try to be consistent in the time that you devote to developing those new skills. Yeah, absolutely agree. Just because you graduate from school or college doesn't mean you have to stop learning new things. And so uh, I, I love that. Thank you again so much. Uh, just really fun episode. Um, hopefully everyone enjoyed kind of following along with the exercise. Hopefully you, maybe you did better than I did and hopefully, um, and, and, you know, didn't stumble over a couple of those things, but, um, even then I, I still remember, you know, monkey iron rope kite. It's, it's still there. Um, <laughs> that was awesome. Um, thank awesome. you for continuing to, uh, subscribe, uh, subscribe, rate, review everything, uh, wherever you're consuming the show and that's going to do it. Chester, thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening. To learn more, go to spotlightbranding.com slash center stage.